the new downtown casino and so yeah with our friend Yassine and Jeff Berry um so we're talking steak cuts our favorite steak cut for pandemic provisions today yes. and I'm gonna go bougie because I'm bougie it is what it is uh and I'm gonna go wagyu ribeye bone it uh now wagyu is a Japanese cow. Wa meaning Japanese and gyu meaning cow or cattle loosely translated, of course. So basically when you have a wagyu anything, it just means it's a, from a Japanese cow. Um, Kobe is always wagyu, but wagyu is not always Kobe. So- Not interchangeable. Times, yeah, a lot of times <laughs> people think like, oh, it's wagyu, it's gotta be Kobe. Kobe is a very specific kind of wagyu. Um, and it's always a Wagyu because it's a Japanese cow or it's at least Japanese style bred cow because there is American Wagyu as well. And Australian um, Wagyu, which is a, like kinds, New, yeah. New Zealand Wagyu. Exactly. Um, they're just bred Japanese style. Right. Uh, and the reason why I like it, it's not just because I'm trying to be bougie or something. It actually, to me, does taste really good because I'm a butter girl. I love butter, just like mm -hmm. many people. Uh, and because of the marbling on Wagyu in general, it's just so rich and buttery, marbled. I just love that kind of taste. And honestly, I don't eat steak that often. So when I do, I want it to be like the best. I want it to be best experience. what I feel like is the best, which is a buttery Wagyu ribeye steak. And it has to be bone in because I love like eating the bone. I'm one of those people that just likes to suck on the bone at the end. And I'll eat the fat too. I love There's that. extra flavor in that. The extra flavor. That Definitely. equals flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Louie, you're going on the other end here for your steak cut. Way, way, way other end. I'm <laughs> going to talk about the hanger steak. Now the hanger steak tastes like a ribeye, but doesn't have that price tag. So it's actually taken from um, the part of like the diaphragm that hangs and since it's like so close to the organs and all that it has like all those nice flavors that beefy hearty flavor associated with ribeye but of course like without that price tag that I was talking about. You gotta um, know how to cook it. Right you gotta know how to cook it. Gotta gotta. Um, I wouldn't cook it past medium rare otherwise that just like. I cook anything past medium rare but. Yeah but you know some people. But nice. it's it really depends on your Art preference because if, if you you like you like spending that extra time in chewing and you know like mastication, go ahead. Butchers actually um, call this butcher's cut because they used to just keep it for themselves rather than sell it. So that's the hanger for you. <laughs> yeah, that's the hanger for you. And uh, yeah, I just want other people like to try it sometime. Yeah. And another thing really nice on that cheaper end of steak is a skirt steak. I mm -hmm. love a skirt steak. I like it with like a simple chimichurri sauce. Um, and again, if you know how to cook it and you learn how to cook it, um, almost any meat cut can be good if you like meat. So that's the thing. Shameless uh, plug, sous vide it. You can do that too, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it at the perfect temperature and sous vide. Yeah. So, speaking of steak, we're moving on to Barry's Prime with Chef Barry and Yassine. Louie, we got the fellows from Barry's Downtown Prime with us in the new Circa Hotel and Casino that's opening up any minute now. Fellas, thank you for joining us. We are so excited to hear about your new restaurant. We are going to open with the elephant in the dining room right now. 
as we all know, the four of us all know, we've opened restaurants several times, um, together and not together. You know that openings are daunting of restaurants. In any regular situation, they are. There's always last minute. There's last minute bullshit. There's all kinds of things going on that you need to do. How are you guys staying positive moving forward, knowing that you were opening during a pandemic? We feel confident in our team building method, number one. And we know we're surrounding ourselves with a group of individuals that not only bring a high level of experience to the table, but also bring a mindset and a culture that we're all on the same page with. So we're not going into this alone as four partners. I mean, it's Barry, myself, Marco Ciccioni, and Donnie Rin. We're the four guys that, that own the restaurant and they're leasing the space from, from Circa and, and, and cut the deal with them uh, for the build out. Um, but it is the elephant in the room because, because something that would have been done six months ago, which is called your staffing compendium, is still up in the air right now. So Pre-COVID, we had the staffing compendium ready to go. January, as soon as we announced the restaurant, boom, we knew that we wanted to hire 17 captains, 18 um, uh, server assistants slash bussers, seven bartenders. We knew what it, what it was. Then COVID hit, and then everyone retracts, and we're still on crunch time during this entire time because we have an opening that got moved from December to October now. So we knew we're in good hands with the casino owner who has a very positive outlook, but at the same time, we're like, well, we have to revisit now. And then we started going out as soon as we could to see what other restaurants are doing. And, and the unfortunate matter is that a lot of people got laid off. A lot of restaurants aren't making it through this. And um, the only thing you can do is stay positive and learn from what's going on out there. Um, the other positive thing is that between our, our portfolio of, of people that we know that come into restaurants and spend money, Barry and Marco and Donnie and myself, we already have a certain amount of large parties booked for the months of December and January, regardless of the fact that conventions canceled. And we know that opening weekend, we already have a certain amount of the books where we have to block the first two days of service that you can't make a reservation online. So again, that's not the realistic way to look at it because when a restaurant's new, everyone wants to come and have dinner and is excited about it and you might crush it the first two weeks and do three, 400 covers uh, and then reality sets in. But we're being positive about it. I think we know enough people in town. I think a lot of people are interested to see what we're going to be doing to where for the first three to four months of our restaurant's life, we're going to be able to feed off of uh, the media hype, feed off of everyone coming to town wanting to check us out, feed off of holiday parties and events. And then we're hoping, just like everyone else, that at some point at the end of January, this is all gonna be distant, distant past. What are diners getting at Barry's Prime that's uniquely yours this time around? Obviously, besides the name, Chef Barry, what are they getting that's uniquely yours? I think we were in the Caribbean and you said, I got the name and you, I said, what? You're like, <laughs> let's, let's do Barry's Downtown Prime, you know? And I'm like, I love the name. So, so it seems responsible for the name. All of our years working together, Barry, Marco, and I at Nine Steakhouse and at Scotch 80, all of the regulars that came to the bar, you know, we, I'd always pay attention when people are on the phone, talking to people, giving them direction for the restaurant. You know, you eavesdrop when you run a restaurant because you want to you be a step ahead of the hospitality game and you want to recognize and reassure if there's an issue or you want to you make sure you offer exemplary service. So when I'd hear people talking on the phone, I'd just come to the bar. I'm down at Barry's. I'm down at Barry's. And they said that for years oh. at Nine. And they said, if you're mm. a Scotch I'm like, no matter what you call the restaurant, the regulars and the people that are there to see Chef Barry and to have the cuisine would say I'm at Barry's. So we were playing around with names, Barry. Remember we had Underground Prime. We had something, something uh, under, uh, I don't know what. We had like 15 names. Prime Underground. Yeah. yeah Prime Underground. And then I was like, wait a minute. Everyone just calls it Barry's. Let's just call it Barry's. So then we came up with Barry's Downtown Prime. And Barry, and Barry, Barry didn't turn that name down. I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it's official, Chef Barry. This is it's, your institution. It's our institution. Myself, Marco, <laughs> Donnie, and Yassine. But, but um, some of, like I was saying, uh, my dad always said, if it, if it ain't broke, don't change it, right? Don't, don't fix it if it's not broke. And so you want to take what you did very, very well in the past and bring it to the future and just do different, different twists and things like that. So we're going to do, do a little fun table side cooking in the dining room and some interaction with the desserts and bring some of the old school table side that, you know, you seen in, you know, when I was a child growing up, there was table side and you don't really get to see that too much anymore. I know there's a few restaurants in town that do, do uh, table side, but when I say table side, I don't mean 
deboning a fish at a table that was cooked in the back. I mean, we're going to do, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. We're going to do a steak Diane table side and all the ingredients will be cooked right in front of you. It's going to be flambe table side. Uh, it's going to be seasoned table side. It's going to be served on a plate and served to you table side. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And that, that's what I, I, I can't really wait to get my hands into the fire with that. That sounds super exciting. Right. Um, you guys did just both mention Scotch 80 Prime, as well as honestly, one of my favorite restaurants of all time, Nine. That's kind of like my time period of like being cool in Vegas and stuff. Um, but you obviously, you know, besides working together in that time period, you obviously saw something extra special in one another because opening a restaurant together, as we talked about, is a daunting task. So what is it, each of you, that you saw in each other that you thought, you know what, I'm going to open a restaurant with this man? I'm half Syrian. You see, he's got definitely the arrow blood in him. I'm half Italian. <laughs> got that little Mediterranean vibe going, but um, I, we, ju we just hit it off from day one. I mean, we, we really, um, you know, and usually the front of the house and the back of the house is always a problem with the chef and the GM. They can't get on the same page. They're always arguing, same old shit, right? But him and I just really hit it off, um, hit it off um, right, right from day one, really. And um, when he came aboard Nine Steakhouse, uh, like I said, we clicked really well together. We worked really well. We were doing some big numbers. And then... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Yassine, you, you had left to go to, did you go Jose Andres? Or what, what was that when you left? Bazaar, where I met yeah, the he went, sharp chefs. Ooh. <laughs> yep. So he went to, he went to work with uh, Jose Andres, and then uh, the shit kind of hit the fan at the Palms for, at Nine Steakhouse, which, which I will say, I, I, hats off to George Maloof, uh, Michael Morton, and um, Scott DeGraff, who gave me the opportunity to do what I did at Nine. But um, when when everything hit the fan and, and Yassine had left and nine was, was at, at, at its lowest, um, this company came in from Chicago, took it over and it was just kind of all messed up. And word on the street was these guys were coming in the Fertitta brothers to buy it and they bought it and they kept me on board at Scotch 80. And, I, and they, they asked me, the brothers said to me, Frank and Lorenzo, what do you need to make nine successful? I said, there's only one thing I need. I said, I need Yassine Layubi to run the whole restaurant for me, the front of the house. He said, fine, go get him. I said, you don't understand. It's not that easy. I said, he's in Morocco. <laughs> you got to go to Morocco. <laughs> I said, right. Morocco. He's like, do what you got to do to get him. I really didn't want to hop on a plane. And I know that was probably possible with the Peter brothers. Because they're great guys. Um, but I called him at first. And then you take it from there, Yassine. You can take it from there when I called you. Well, yeah. So I got, I got the call from Barry. And I had a talk with my, my dad because I was helping him with some stuff out there. But flew out, worked with Barry again. And I knew that if there was any chef that, I, that I've worked with in the past, that I was able to, to do what I needed to do to build a successful team without any hindrance from the back of the house. And I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean it in a way where we see eye to eye. I was like, this is the chef I'm going to work with. So I came back, we worked together. And then uh, that's when we decided to, to partner, to leave uh, Scotch 80, partner and do consulting. We had a lot of great uh, opportunities to consult and travel. And then throughout our travels, we got a call from our third partner, who wasn't our partner at the time, Marco. And we're in the middle of the Caribbean. And, and, and this is, this is going to kind of tie into working with individuals and deciding to, to work with them for the rest of your life, really, in the restaurant, is, is choosing people that you know that you can get along with. And I'll explain what I mean by that. But Marco called and he said, hey, I have an opportunity um, for a steakhouse. You guys, are you guys interested? We said, sure. We flew back. We met with Marco. We met with, with Donnie. And then the rest is history. We got, we got this deal on the table and the deal working. But the bottom line is before we even got into that, Marco and Barry and I worked the floor together at nine. When I say work the floor, Chef Barry's very active in the dining room as well, which is another reason why I like working with, with Chef Barry because a lot of chefs are very, I mean, you know this, you worked in all kinds of kitchens. Yeah, they like to hide. Right? <laughs> a lot of chefs are socially awkward or they're really amazing at one thing, which is a, a cool culinary project. But when they come out in the dining room, they're frozen. They're not. And, and us three work together in, and bond in a great way. And more importantly, we're able to dig into each other about something. Like if I hate something in the kitchen or something that's wrong with the food, I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll, I'm yelling at Barry. And then Barry comes to the dining room and he sees something he doesn't like and he's yelling at me. And then Marco, same thing. And at the end of the day, we know that we're doing that because we're passionate about the same thing. And we're able to put it, brush it under the table and then have a beer at the end of the shift and be like, all right, what are we doing tomorrow and this and that. And it's like a brother. It's, a, it's, it's really like a sibling relationship. Like sometimes you want to kill your little brother, you want to kill your older brother, 
But at the end of the day, if anyone else is trying to kill them, you jump in the way and, and stop that from happening. And that's the kind of relationship we have. And that's why I think that this is going to be a successful, I know it's going to be a successful venture is because we, we think the same and we, we work the same. Uh, let's bring it back to nine because it, it keeps coming back to that. Yeah. Uh, at nine, you both created a place that was to see and be seen. I mean, let's be honest. On any given night, you could sit next to Brittany in her prime. You could sit next to Michael Jordan in his prime. Bill Clinton in his prime, who's, he's always in his prime. But when I dined there also, I felt like a VIP. So how, I, I think there are very few restaurants that can make you feel like that. So how do you replicate that, that same atmosphere in now your own restaurant that you own and also replicating it downtown? There are a little challenges there. There's a lot of amazing stuff that we'll talk about downtown, but there are different challenges there. So how do you replicate that see and be seen? I want to be there. Everyone's a VIP atmosphere. Well, you know, I've been out of the game now. I'm going to say almost a year and a half, not cooking. And where's Barry at? I've kept in contact with a lot of celebrities and a lot of friends and a lot of local people. But like I said, going back to what you do great, making people feel like rock stars, even when they're not rock stars, making people feel at home when they're not celebrities, making the locals feel like it's your home because it is their home. The locals are how we, how we, we survive, right? Mm -hmm. Celebrities come in one, two or three at night or one or two at night, whatever it is, but you've got maybe 250, 300 people that are dining that are locals or visitors. And I, and I try to make them feel like they're rock stars. It's important to make them feel happy. It's, you're, you're in my house now, which is your house. You're coming to eat in my house. I want it to feel like your house. So um, the challenge is to get everybody downtown. And I don't even think it's going to be a challenge anymore because what Derek Stevens has done here, Las Vegas hasn't seen anything like this for 38 plus years. It's truly amazing. And I think the, the, the hotel is going to speak for itself. My name and Yassine's name will speak for itself. Uh, Donnie's name will speak for itself. And um, I brought my, uh, my executive sous chef who was with me at Nine Steakhouse. Um, you talk about nine. I, he left to go to move to Boston to be uh, sous chef or chef at Legal Seafood. And I said, you know, who better to do this? I talked to Yassine. I said, who better to do this to be the chef de cuisine in a restaurant than Patrick? I mean, he knows how I am. He knows how you are. He knows what my standards are because we come from the core of Charlie Palmer steak and Charlie Palmer Oreo. I was Oreo. in New York and yeah. Las Vegas. But Pat really, really, he was, I think Pat's about 10 years younger than me but he gets it. He's one of the young guys who got it. He got it really good and he adapted. He can take a lot of pressure. He knows how to handle the kitchen. He can handle it when we're doing six, 700. He can handle it when we're doing 70, 80, 100, you know? But uh, that's a big part of the game. There's, there's a word in our industry that a lot of places like to use, but they don't, a lot of companies don't know how to implement it. And when you do implement it correctly, you can have a successful operation and that's employee empowerment. I guess it's not a word, it's a, it's a, it's a phrase. Yes. But employee empowerment. And I remember when I, when I joined the team at Nine Steakhouse, Marco had already been there. Barry was already there. And what I saw is that they really took that to the next level by enhancing the guest experience because they were allowed to do enhancement, VIP treats, send out shots, send out a glass of champagne without having to ask a manager every single time. And I came from a very corporate background. And, and I went into that and I saw that. I'm like, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's so much free stuff leaving the kitchen. But when you calculate it at the end of the month on your P&L and you look at, okay, a couple of half splits of champagne are sent out every night, a couple of or half glasses of champagne, a couple cupcakes at the end. Chef Barry sends an appetizer here and there. When you add that up, it's still on a percentage of your top line minimal and it creates a memorable experience for everyone coming in. Now, a lot of restaurants and a lot of companies try to do that and they say they do that, but there's too much red tape. Oh, you can't go over 3% comp for this month. You can't go over... Uh, 4% on a slower month. Um, everyone has to ask first and you get five drink tickets per bartender and there's too much, too much, too much of that stuff in. And if you're able to, to put together a system to where you have a team that you trust and they're empowered, then your job as a restaurant manager or restaurant owner is smooth sailing from there. You just have to make sure that operationally the restaurant's functioning. And I think that's going to be a huge part of our success. You are so right about that. It actually leads yeah. on to the next question, which is, we know that your vibe is vintage Vegas, vintage Vegas, glitz and glamour, 1950s, 60s, 70s, which honestly, as you're saying that, I'm thinking that in my head, 
that reminds me of that time period when Vegas was a town where you took care of people. Is that one of the things that attracts you to that era for our city? The really great part about opening up a new restaurant, especially downtown, it's Circa, is that, you know, there's just something about downtown that has that feeling of old school. No matter whether you're at the Golden mm -hmm. Nugget or you're at the El Cortez or whatever it may be. So, I mean, just putting our steakhouse in Circa and being able to work with Punch Design and rendering it and trying to get that look, it just, it's so gratifying to me because the way that this restaurant has been designed with that kind of old school feeling um, really makes it more exciting and it makes it more um, loving to work in. It's the environment is what I wanted to do next. It's actually what I wanted to do, that kind of style, you know, and, and bringing back the table side and all that fun stuff. I think it's a perfect, perfect uh, storm. That's what, that's what I really think. Well, you bring up downtown, and honestly, it is the place to be right now. It is, whether it's tourists or it's especially locals. Um, it's where the cool restaurants are. It's where the cool chefs are. It's where the cool bar scene is right now. It's where the hipsters are. It's where the young people are, the millennials, blah, 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 all kinds of things. Um, how do you feel about your new location, and are you going to miss being on the Strip? Because you guys, you know, you worked on the Strip for many years. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're so positive about being downtown that we surprised ourselves when the negotiations started, because we were always, you know, strip guy. I mean, the Palms is not really the strip, it really was. I mean, but it, it feels like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Bazaar Meat was technically the strip. But th there's so much action down here, and there's this idea that when you're on the strip, that, oh, downtown is Fremont, and people getting drunk and drinking mile-high cocktails. Actually, there's more of that on the strip than there is down here. That you is know? true. That, that would be mm -hmm. the equivalent of saying, of, of, of walking in front of the Paris or Bellagio, and you go into a restaurant and you don't want to give the restaurant inside the Paris or the Bellagio credit because of the fact that there are 75,000 drunk people walking up and down the strip every day. It's the same thing. Fremont is the same thing as Las Vegas Boulevard. The, the main difference down here is that there's this resurgence now. I, I moved down here. I moved downtown about, what, four months ago now? In order to be in the action and to be close to work, number one, I'm a two-minute drive from, from Circa. So but jealous. also to kind That's of get, start to get a vibe <laughs> for the area. You know what I mean? Like all the local spots over here and, and, and to kind of see, and we're going to, a lot of that's going to reflect in our menu. We're going to have a great vegan menu. We're going to, we're going to have great local beers. Uh, we're giving a lot of credit to the art in, in our restaurant, to the local art scene, actually all of the art in the restaurant, which you'll see once we get closer is all commissioned by local artists. Cool. Uh, some big names, some not so big names, but, it's gonna, there's going to be a, a big, a big uh, uh, push on that. And the reason is because downtown in and of itself is this new Las Vegas, right? That's like, that's uh, local, it's healthy, it's cool, it's hip. And I think we're going to hit, we're going to hit all that with downtown. At the same time, we're bringing back that old school Mater D feel to where you'll see Barry, Marco, myself on the floor, uh, touching tables, shaking hands, and the old school people that come in, you know, with their glitz and glamour and their suits and and it's going to be a cool, it's going to be a cool vibe, but the bar scene is definitely going to be a big part of our concept. Cool. Very awesome. I'm already um, super excited. I'm so excited. Chef Barry, you got something for show and tell for us? Yeah, so you guys wanted to show and tell. You said not only, I'm, I'm sure when chefs come on, they bring stuff that they have in a kitchen, a knife, a number 10 baller, or something like that. So I brought some mm -hmm. fun stuff. First, I'm going to do the kitchen things. This is a little a little pastry stand Ooh. that when people would come to my house, uh, you know, I put little cookies on it and when we're done eating, I just pop it on the on the table. So we're gonna have something similar like this at our restaurant, maybe a little smaller. We're still working on finding the vessel, but that's mine from my house. But now don't laugh, ladies. I'm sure you're gonna know what this is, okay? Okay. You know what this is? <laughs> no, no, don't get crazy. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the roller. <laughs> you see that? Dude, I'm not even gonna say what it looks like, but. No, no, no. <laughs> So my, 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 my fiance Shanique said to me, you're getting older now, so you need this crazy thing. I, I don't know where she got it out of LA or I don't know where. So you do this, you know, 15 minutes on each eye, right? Right. It takes the wrinkles out, right? So this is something I really like because I am getting older and I notice it did, it does take the wrinkles out. Okay. <laughs> now now I've got a I've got another one here. Now don't laugh at me. Now oh my I never I, I fell in love with this when I when I had my eye injury. Because at nighttime, wearing this is a little bit not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this right here, this right oh, here wow. is a pad that's really, really thick. Uh -huh. And I'm not ashamed to say I wear it because I'm at home. So I just put it on like this, right? 
And then there's the trick to it, because if I sleep on my left side, I go like this, and I can still watch TV from the right side. <laughs> but if I really want to get crazy, I sleep with the air conditioner on and the fan over my head, I go like this. I cover the ear and the eye like this, and it works out perfect. Whoa. So the air conditioner is just inside of my face. But this little thing <laughs> added, and it makes me feel really good at nighttime. So those are my two crazy things that I love. I wanted to do something other than a knife or, or elsewise, but this is good. This is good Seriously need to log onto YouTube, everybody, and see this right. purple you, thing that Chef you, Barry has. I won't even describe it. Have you seen it? I've seen uh, rollers, but they're I've like a jade uh, roller. Yes, like a jade or like a yeah. rose quartz. It's some sort of rock, you know, that's supposed to have some sort of healing properties. That to me looks like something else. My, mine is very boring. It looks like a passport. Okay. I was going to say. Okay, and I'll show you close up on the camera. Okay, there's Japanese writing there. Ooh, there's a concept okay. store called Muji. Have you heard of it? M U J I? No. They've got okay, one in Santa Monica, but this one. My dad came to visit during the opening of Bazaar Meat, and he bought me a stack of these when he went to, he used to go to Barcelona and see all the games all the time, and brought me a stack of these from the Muji store in Barcelona. And I love these because I take all my notes. Actually, these are shift notes from uh, January of 2019 I still have in here. But okay. I love them because they're super thin. Uh, they're super sleek, Japanese design. Mm -hmm. And you can take your notes through them throughout service. And they're not these big bulky things. So if you're wearing a slim fit suit, like you know the style is, and you don't want to tear your suit with a big bulky thing, you can slide it in very easily. Back pocket, side pocket, front pocket. And I have a stack and I'm almost out, which means I'm going to have to request time off to our uh, ourselves to go to Barcelona because the one in uh, oh, yeah. Santa Monica. You can only get them there. The <laughs> yep. Oh, oh like, whoa. Boom. So Muji, M-U-J-I, best concept store around. They have awesome notebooks. Check them out. Um, for awesome. those of you who don't know, I'm actually almost as excited about seeing Yasin all dressed up in his style and suits again as I am about Jeff Barry's cooking coming up because uh, I miss that man. I miss those three-piece suits and all that coordinating color right. and the patterns. Woo I can't wait to see that. All right. It is our favorite time on the fly, this time with Chef Barry and with Yasin. We're going to start with Chef Barry. 60 okay. seconds, rapid fire questions. Ooh. Louis, starting now. Now. Favorite after service snack? Oh uh, man. Um, Come on, Chef. <laughs> sorbet. Biggest cook pet peeve? Oh my God, you give me rapid fire question. <laughs> not, not being prepared with utensils in the line. Childhood food craving? Pizza. Best music to cook to? Beach Boys. Dream place to travel and eat? Rome, Italy. Most inspirational chef. Charlie Palmer. What did you want to be in kindergarten? Astronaut. Wow. Best cooking advice. Clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. Tastiest steak cut. Spinalis muscle rib cap. Fancy. Favorite celebratory drink. Johnny Walker Blue on the Rock. What is your dream job, or are you living it? I am living it. Woo! All right, Lou, it's your turn with Yasin. Yasin! Here we go, Yasin. All right, in three, two, and one. Quarantine comfort food. Oh, barbecue chicken. Your childhood food craving. Uh, lamb tagine. Oh. Your favorite Moroccan food? <laughs> uh, uh, it's going to sound cliche, but couscous on Fridays. Mm. Dream place to travel and eat? Barcelona. Favorite wine grape? Favorite wine grape? Cabernet Sauvignon. Favorite outdoor activity? Walking my dog Bronco. What's your favorite Las Vegas restaurant besides yours? Pina Poblano. Yeah. Love that place. Music that puts you in the right mindset. Anything Elvis. Favorite scent? Lavender. And what have you what haven't you done that you really want to do? Cliff jumping. 
Huh. And in the spirit of being part of the Bizarre family, we got to ask you that question that we always ask everyone. One blackmailable fact you seen first. Well, I'll let the cat out of the bag on this one. Hopefully my dad's not watching. If he does, I get in trouble. I got a tattoo last <gasps> month. Ooh! Oh, that Is that your first one? It's the first of many Ever? more to come. What wow. is it? Tell me it's, it's Lam Tajim. Portrait. No, it's a portrait. <laughs> portrait wow. of my mother. Wow. Oh, that is awesome. One of the top tattoo artists in the country. Hey, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get in big trouble if my dad sees this one. So you know He's you know how old I come from an old school country when you're forty years old and you're still afraid to announce to your family you got a tattoo. But he's going to see it at some point, dude. Oh, he's so. going to see it October 28th, that's for sure. <laughs> How about you, Chef Barry? One blackmailable fact before we go. One blackmailable fact. Well, since I got back from the island, I've been trying to eat really healthy, and my fiance Shanique, is making meal preps for me, as I had asked her. Hmm. And um, every once in a while, I'll get up around 2 or 3 in the morning, but then i got to go take a leak. And I, in, my, in my bedroom, in my master suite, I have a little mini fridge that I, I hide baby roots in the back. And I, and I pop one in my mouth and then at like three or four in the morning, I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and, and, and then I take, I take the wrapper and I put it in a Kleenex and squeeze it tight and I put it in the bottom of the trash. So you can't see that, that silver and red package. Oh my oh God. My God. Yeah, food yeah. Cheat. Uh, okay, gentlemen, this is your time. The last couple of seconds, go ahead and sell it for Barry's prime at Circa. Why do people need to go? What's going on? What's super cool? Come and see our staff. Come and see the beautiful restaurant located in Circle Hotel. Let me do my magic for you. Let me cook for you. And let me let you leave with a smile. Because I love to cook and I love to people leave with smiles. So please come and see us at Barry's Downtown Prime. Go for the Syrian-Italian magic. Yassine, yes. go ahead. Yes. Sell it. Come see us for a variety of reasons. But mainly, come visit our team. We're going to be a, a, a top-notch team. People that have been in this town for a long time and have been doing an amazing job. And whoever you sit with, whatever section you sit in, you're always going to have a spectacular dinner thanks to the person that's going to be taking care of you and the team that's taking care of you. Hospitality to the max. Trust us. Love it. I awesome. trust them. Thanks, Jeff Barry. Thanks, Yasin. We wish you so much good vibes, Thank good you. energy for an amazing opening. Ooh. We know it's going to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Get Thank you.